Hi, Tony Selzer here. Welcome to the line. We've got a great, great show today. I mean, we're talking bleeding edge technology with one of the foremost experts on this type of stuff, Internet of Things. And, you know, we, I, I'm, I'm a buzzword junkie, you know, and it's been big data. It's been marketing automation. It's been all these things on the show. But Internet of Things, this machine to machine technology, this movement is the next best revolution. It's going to dwarf the Internet, really. And that's a big statement. But I've got Philip Regine on, and I hope I got that, that pronunciation right, or at least somewhat close. Phil, how, how did you get into this? The, how did you start this company called Chimera IoT? Why did, what inspired you to kind of build this common language that kind of tied all these things together? Talk to me about how we got here. Now we got here from my CTO. And he, uh, he got me going from this from Sun Edison. Okay. So we work for solar, and the solar has large distributed fields all over the world. Okay. One of the issues they faced was getting the data. Right. They just could not get the data reasonably. So we started dealing with that issue, and we realized that uh, this is the same issue that all of the IoT world has. I IoT meaning Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. The movement of objects through cell space and Wi-Fi zones so that you keep getting the data and you don't lose any of it, regardless of where you're at and what right. you're doing. Right. And, and let me speak a little bit to, and I want you to chime in behind this and kind of, you know, correct my ignorance. The, the, what we're seeing and where we're going is instead of us morphing and learning our environment, learning how to use another device, learning how to interact with another our environment is going to change and morph and learn us and customize itself to drive efficiencies in our consumption of, of not only energy, but, but deliver us a better world customized to us. Talk to me about what that means. Oh, that's absolutely right, Tony. What we expect to see is that the devices will have sensors on all the devices in the world. The price of sensors has been dropping dramatically, mm -hmm. less than a quarter for a light sensor. Mm -hmm. But more than that, processors, processors, the things that we were paying $1,000 for 20 years ago, mm -hmm. they'll be less than a dollar. Wow. So these will be distributed everywhere mm -hmm. on anything. Mm -hmm. and, and what that gives us is the potential for the things around us to be aware of us mm -hmm. because we're all carrying cell phones. Right. Most of the world right now is carrying cell phones. Not only will we carry cell phones, we'll have sensors, I believe, health-wise, we'll have sensors that are actually connected to our body right. so that they read the proteins and make sure doctors know how we're, how we're doing. Mm -hmm. So with that means that all these devices around you, the parking spaces, the buildings, the chairs, the beds, the couches, the refrigerators, the coffee makers, all those will know what you want because you have a pattern that you live in your life. Right. And, and so that pattern is going to not only drive how you receive information, it's going to drive how you consume energy, but it's also going to start to look for opportunities to, to improve and deliver information to you in better ways. And then you and I started talking about that a little bit. The, the new opportunities that are going to be created for technology companies are, are really, I mean, are really astronomical. Would you agree? Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 15,000 startups in San Francisco right now, of which 5,000 of them are doing IoT. Wow. That's, that's a, that, there's companies blossoming all over the world, mm -hmm. all over the world, because the Internet gives us the power to communicate. Mm -hmm. All over the world we see companies doing IoT. They're creating ideas based on connecting not only devices, but people, and then taking the information, the states of those devices, mm -hmm. and making decisions based on that. So shifting gears on you a little bit, you know, I mean, that's the state of the state. What is the value that your company brings? I mean, how are you helping organizations monetize this and create events in ways that they can actually learn how to make money because you know one of the problems with all those startups is a lot of them get going with an idea and a concept with no no means and no way to create monetization or any monetization any business model of any kind how are you helping them learn how to do that so we we do three things we enable mm -hmm. we monetize and we activate okay so enabling means 
you know, we take those companies that are designing wearables and IoT devices, mm -hmm. and we give them a platform where the, instead of it being six months to market, mm -hmm. they can they can do the hard part in one week. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing we do is we monetize because built into our software is a monetization platform based on on units mm -hmm. of anything. Right. So what that means is that they can decide to charge based on any quality that they want with their, and that would mean that if they wanted to decide on charging by hours or distance or location or connections, they could do that with the software that they've already got. Mm -hmm. And they can change the prices based on contractual arrangements with the people, their customers at any time. Mm -hmm. So what that gives them is the power to create a piece of software to get monetization over the lifetime of their products. Mm -hmm. It's not just software, but products. Mm -hmm. And then to activate those products based on events, mm -hmm. which means they now have the ability to change the environment. So give me a story that, where you've seen that happen practically today. Uh, a, a perfect example right now is a wristwatch, a, a wristband that uh, based on galvanic skin response detects when you wake up. What? And they have a coffee maker that when you wake up, it knows that you've woken up and it starts brewing the coffee. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, you eliminate the need of a maid, right? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a powerful value proposition. So, so you know, this is, a, this is one of those things that's just exploding. How, how have you guys chosen and really decided where you want to go? What type of businesses do you want to go after? How have you figured out where's the, the niche that you're going to go ri grow rich in? Um, what, we re what we realized is that it's for most companies in, in the IoT space, mm -hmm. the, co the concept of being able to, to support the cost of a product having a, a lifetime of 20 years is difficult. Right. So if you're to ask them, What's your, what's your major op, what's your major problem right now? They would tell you they're not sure how to monetize their products. They have great ideas, mm -hmm. but they don't know how to make the money to pay for the costs, their cost of ownership of supporting those products over 20 years. Right. So that's how we thought about it. Mm -hmm. We thought, how do you allow them to produce value over a long period of time and at the same time support the needs of their customers. Mm -hmm. So I have a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. Utilities want you to lower your energy mm -hmm. usage. The lot, the cost of a light bulb right now, of mm -hmm. a smart light bulb, mm -hmm. is ninety dollars. Okay. Okay. the The number of hours that they, they can run is fifty thousand hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right now you have to pay ninety dollars for that light bulb. But let's say I just give you that light bulb. Mm -hmm. I'll give it to you for free, mm -hmm. and then. I'll just charge you for usage. Now the company that sells the light bulb, they can go to the utility and they can say, hey, I'm promoting a cleaner world. Look, you know, I've got a light bulb that knows when people leave the room. Mm -hmm. So they get a break from the utility, kickback from the utility. Mm -hmm. They get a percentage, they, they get an increased percentage by loaning me the light bulb, right? Mm -hmm. By giving me that light bulb right. and they charge on top of that. Mm -hmm. Me as the consumer, I pay less mm -hmm. per hour for the usage of that light bulb. Mm -hmm. I win, the company wins, the utility wins. Everybody wins, and yet, instead of $90, they make $250 for the cost of that light bulb over the lifetime. Well, I just wanna, I wanna make a comment validating some of this because it's real easy to think, oh, that's 10, 20, 30 years out there. That's not really something that's reality to happen today. And we have a small REMC in, in Indiana you know, out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, visualize Podunk, Indiana farmland, and this is it. But they have aggregated four counties, a very progressive uh, organization. They've, they've evolved. They now deliver cable. They now deliver broadband. They now deliver, you know, on top of telephone electricity. And what they are doing now, just on the, just on the bleeding edge scale, is they, they're allowing their users to customize um, how much they win and where their their homes can can consume energy, and then they're teaching them how to be off um, the demand, how to get off peak times, and it's able to change their bill 20, 30, 40, 50 percent real impact in the bill of the of the consumer. Not only that, you know, it's consuming less electricity, which helps the environment. Blah blah blah. But green for green, if you will. And and here they're doing it. And and so when people hear you say stuff like this that the environment's just going to customize and change. 
I mean, it's happening. It's right in front of us. It's it's happening in front of our eyes. And if they don't, it, wouldn't you agree that we're a lot further down the road than people would give this credit? I, I think we're much farther down the road than people give us credit. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I think that we're reaching that hockey stick point where the growth of this kind of technology will actually change our lives substantially substantially mm -hmm. the amount of energy consumed will go down dramatically mm -hmm. look at parking spaces mm -hmm. if how much time is spent finding parking spaces right. gasoline people's to, if parking if you know a parking space is available when you get to it mm -hmm. you, you'll just drive right to it sensors will tell us that mm -hmm. so these kind of things of optimizing our environment will have huge benefit to us mm -hmm. You heard it here first on the line. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you, Tony. I really enjoyed it. Yep.